everyone, Eileen Bayer, the PM here. Welcome to um, the third installment, um, otherwise known as episode three in our mental health mini series on Huntington's um, disease. In the first two series, we went over what Huntington's disease is, and Wednesday we covered. Um, what are the symptoms of it in the different areas that it affects? Today we are going to cover um, juvenile Huntington's disease, uh, which is the same thing basically but at a younger age in how it dramatically is more severe than when you get it at an older age. So let's get started. <clears throat> The symptoms of juvenile Huntington's disease, um, the start and the progression of it, of the diagnosis in young people may be slightly different from that in adults. Problems that often present themselves early in the course of this disease include such things as loss of previously learned academic or uh, physical skills, rapid, significant drop in overall school performance, behavioral problems, and the physical changes that affect people um, that get it younger um, are these. Uh, contracted and rigid muscles that affect the gait, especially in young children. Changes in fine motor skills that might not be noticeable in skills such as handwritings, um, tremors or slight involuntary movements, and seizures. Um, so these are all the things that affect um, Huntington's disease. Now, you sit there and say, well, when should I see a doctor about it? Well... The truth is, you should see a doctor if you know, notice any changes in your movement, emotional state, or mental ability. The signs and symptoms of Huntington's disease can be caused by a number of different conditions. Therefore, it is important to get a prompt, thorough diagnosis of it. Now, the causes of Huntington's disease, um, juvenile and regular Huntington's disease, uh, is caused by an inherited de um, defect in a single gene. Huntington's disease is an autosomal dominant disorder, which means that a person needs only one copy of the defective gene to develop the disorder. Um, with the exception of genes on the sex chromosomes, a person inherits two copies of every gene, one copy from each parent. A parent with the defective gene could pass along the defective copy of the gene or the healthy copy. Each child in the family, therefore, has a 50% chance of inheriting that gene that causes the genetic disorder. Um, so there's a lot involved in it. Um, the only way you can get Huntington's, as it's stated, is by um, inheriting it um, from one of your parents. So if you don't have anybody in your family that has Huntington's, there's a good chance you're not going to get it. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't know about it because it is a very, very devastating illness. And you see here how it, this is a Huntington's, you know, and this picture here is right here. So you can see how things um, on it affect the brain. And, you know, it's not a nice thing. Thing to have at all. Um, so remember, before we leave, remember my saying, to always see with your heart and not your eyes, because what matters is what the heart sees and not what the eyes can see. The eyes is just a shell, 
what counts is what's invisible to the eye, which is their heart, their soul. All the things that make us important is inside. It's not this. It's in here. And remember, your words can either uplift or tear down. Please make the choice to uplift others by seeing with your heart and not your eyes. That's what this mini-series is all about, and that is what I try to do, is to educate people so they can see more clearly with their heart instead of with their eyes. It's not nice to be prejudged because of a physical or mental disability or because somebody doesn't like the way you look or the way you talk. That's just, you know, it's not nice. It's, you can do a lot better by uplifting somebody. So remember, you matter to me. You're important. And until we see each other again, I love you. Bye.